I considered myself an artist or I considered myself a painter because I do other things than paint, but it didn't even take a minute for me to say, you know what, I'm a painter, that's what I do. I guess the thing that would be the commonality of all my work is that I tell stories. Even if you really don't know the story, even if I'm working on a landscape, it's always a story. I grew up in Mississippi and we're all storytellers there, so. I've lived at the brewery for a long time. I never intended to be here for a long time, but it sort of creeps up on you. And it's wonderful to have all this space. When I first moved here, I went crazy. I had big space and um, my work went huge. And it went big for a really long time and I think now I've calmed down enough after maybe seven years that I can work small again. But that's one of the luxuries of having all this space here. And the biggest luxury, of course, is the community that you get in the brewery because anything that you decide to do, any path that you decide to take, there's generally somebody that you can talk to that will help you. Or if you've just been locked up in the studio for days on end, you walk out the door and something interesting is going to happen. I started off by doing mostly illustrative work, very representational, and, and also particularly comics. I mean, as a kid, I loved comics and I would draw comics. And I have a series of autobiographical comics um, online right now. And then about oh, four years ago or so, I was curious about abstracts because a lot of friends of mine painted abstracts and the truth is I really didn't understand them. You know, so I decided I wanted to learn about abstracts, so I started painting them because I figured, well, the best way to learn is to do it. And I found out that even though it looks easy, it's not. It's not easy to paint abstracts. These paintings behind me right here are currently what I'm working on. And this is a series where I really I wanted to paint energy, and it started out with trying to paint energy in the abstract sense, and, and as it was evolving, it became more like when you're at a campfire and you're looking there and you see just at the end the glowing embers and the darkness and there's a sort of peaceful feeling that you have just sitting there watching the embers and, and that's sort of what it's now evolving into from just plain energy to that that sense of, of peace when you're sitting there and just looking at the embers burning. Well I primarily work in stainless steel, bronze and steel and it's all fabricated so I'm always cutting and welding and sanding my pieces. I'm really interested in the figure so for the most part it's all an abstracted figure based. I don't know why I'm so fascinated with the, the human figure, I guess I just really love people and it's really great to be in the art business because it really is like being in the joy business because so many people get so much inspiration and joy from the work that they collect so that's really a great thing I think about you know being an artist. I lost my studio when I moved out of my house in Santa Monica, so I moved to a small apartment and I didn't have anywhere to work. And I never really wanted to learn the iPad program because I felt that always computer takes away from the actual painting or drawing or whatever, sculpting, whatever else I was doing. But since I did not have a studio, I started playing on the iPad and then I got this program called Brushes. And I do these on the iPad and then have them printed at a printer. But these were really fun. I've been doing these for about a year and a half and I had so much fun just learning that program. Photos that I've taken, I draw it from that and shoot it down to the printer and have it printed and I, I just think they came out so really fun, colorful and just really fun. I go back and forth between painting and sculpting. So I was doing the sculpting for the last, I don't know when I actually started her, but um, I put her away to do the little heads that I was saying about the facial expressions, but uh, this I want to finish because she's kind of staring at me. <laughs> I want to get her done. This is Scarlett. We call her Scarlett O'Harris. That was my married name. She is going to be for my ex-husband in his yard, and I'll probably finish her in... She's oil-based clay right now. I have to get her head right. It's not complete. Uh, she'll be fiberglass and make resin, so it's not so heavy. It won't be bronzed. And I'll probably paint her white, which she was white. We had one spot on her back. About 10 years ago, maybe a little more, I came to the brewery on one of our art walks. And during, just as a person just wandering around with my family at the time, I thought I always wanted to live here. And I sort of made a plan, a goal to come back 
and I moved here. And primarily the reason I did it was I wanted to wake up in the morning and if I wanted to photograph, I could just throw on my PJs, get a cup of coffee and come down and photograph where I lived. And that was the, the main reason, maybe the only reason that I wanted to live here. But as I've lived here, uh, other reasons um, have opened up as to why I've moved here. I've been photographing since I was seven. I started out with Polaroid film, and then I moved to regular film. But uh, I shoot primarily for myself. I shoot nudes and anything that's sort of sensual. I am a commercial photographer, so I also shoot portraits and weddings and events and all those other good things too. I'm a photographer and choreographer. I'm also the director of The Brazen Booties. Uh, we bill ourselves as a titillating variety show. We include performers who do burlesque, dancing, cabaret, aerial, hoop, fire, poi, LED tricks, and we've just recently added sideshow acts, including a bed of nails, sword swallowing, and walking on glass. So we try and create an environment for new creative people to come in and do performance art that lights their fire. I've been doing pinup photography for off and on for 15 years. My specialty is doing recreations of actual pinup drawings and artwork from the 50s and 60s. My inspiration comes from the artists of the 50s and 60s like Joyce Ballantyne and Jill Evgren. They created works of art that are timeless and people still look back on them as something very special. I like to think that I bring a more modern twist to a lot of what's going on in the pinup world. I try and make it a little more modern with a different kind of lighting, a different kind of connotation and subtext in a lot of the pictures. Uh, so sometimes you'll see my signature in there just by looking at what else is in there in the details. So this is my dream machine. I really am intrigued with art that, that moves, it's kinetic or has some kind of interaction with people. I don't like art that you just go to the museum and, and look at and somebody stands there and says, no, don't touch that. You know, I I like the viewers to be able to interact with my art and touch it or with this particular piece uh, it's meant to be viewed with your eyes closed and the flashing lights make a pattern of colors in your, on your eyes, on the inside of your eyelids. They're almost like a canvas when they view it, the back of their eyelids are becoming the canvas. This is my skull box, I call it the relic, and again, it's meant to be interactive and the viewer can actually come and touch it and spin it around and see all the different aspects of the art. My first profession is costume designer. I design costume for movies and uh, TV commercial, but I also design for uh, musical and uh, circus, uh, like opening ceremony and different events. I create special fabric uh, for movie characters, and these are mostly by silk screening, and uh, I use uh, several techniques like gold foil or devore or brocade. Uh, this fabric here was created for the movie The Cell and it's gold foil on ribbed uh, silk velvet and uh, most of the fabric I create are three-dimensional special effects so they're not flat and uh, a few that I like really are this kind of fabric I created this fabric for uh, Star Trek television. I worked on uh, Star Trek television for 10 years and I created this uh, special fabric for aliens and, uh, and special performers. So it was actually created with many layers like uh, dye and then uh, silk screening with latex and uh, special polymer. So there is a lot of research involved to create this uh, three-dimensional fabric. You know, once I sort of started getting a little bit sick of doing the whole fashion industry grind, I wanted to kind of come back, take all of that knowledge and time, and start making kind of artwork. It was time for me, I think. I finally had learned enough and got sort of a, a visual language, I guess. And so I started doing work like this. Um, what I do is I do large-scale embroideries and uh, appliques. I also do a lot of work with buttons. So what I try to do is I try to use the tools that were formerly part of my craft and kind of turn them now into my art. And uh, I don't know, I think 
This is a pretty good representative piece of what I'm doing. Um, it's an over black American flag with a cutout who's afraid of the big bad wolf. I love America, I love pop culture. I love just the, you know, the swirling kind of a torrent of how pop culture affects us as people, us as community, us as society, and just kind of how it's taken us down the toilet a little bit. Um, I'm really into sort of the decline of Western civilization, uh, but in a fun way, you know? So <laughs> everything's kind of falling apart, but you know, I think we're all kind of enjoying the ride. And uh, I really want my work to kind of reflect that. I've been running this rental studio for 25 years, and now for the past almost six years, I've been here at the brewery. Love it. Love the people, love the community, the resources, the view, and the roof, and barbarous. Oh, yeah. Hi, we're over here at the Jesuswall.com in the bathtub area. We call it the Christmas light wall. This has been surprisingly popular and profitable. Bathtub is a perennial favorite and the Christmas lights, you know, bright sparkly things, they always work. A lot of people like to shoot here. Hi, here we are at the meat and potatoes of the Jesuswall.com, the Jesus Wall itself. This came about from uh, collecting religious icons in the early 1990s. A makeup artist said I should put them all together in one wall to reinforce each other. And it's been here ever since. Um, it's brought in Brad Pitt, uh, some of the cast from House, uh, Puff Daddy, Rick Ross, uh, French Monta I don't know all the rapper guys, but you see them on TV, there they are. Uh, at one point, I didn't want to offend Christians and whatnot. I took off all the pictures of Jesus. I just had Mary and saints. You know what they called it? That's right, Jesus wall. Photography is just a way for me to capture a moment or a light. At some point in everyone's development, they tend to get drawn toward that, that ascension toward things that are brighter. I endeavor to find those moments that make people go, ooh, there's more, there's something bigger than me. After the impact, uh, there is a, an equal and opposite response that makes the water rise up. And in this case, there's a, this is just a moment before separation. I ended up shooting this in my kitchen sink. It was sort of an impromptu thing. Uh, I got lost in the moment, spent probably six hours uh, total with the whole thing. The sun began to go down in the window that was behind, and it became, instead of my backlight, it became sort of a secondary thing, but in chasing the exposure, the image got warmer and warmer, and I got lucky, it was a, a sweet spot. I was a journalist before, I, uh, I even shared in a Pulitzer Prize. I was embedded with the 1st Marine Expeditionary Unit in Iraq in 2003, it was for the invasion, and it was when the bullets were flying and people were dying that I realized words weren't enough for me anymore, and I, I needed something else. I needed something else to tell the story of the world around us, so I became an artist. Now I create large-scale paintings and structural materials, and together I put them together to be art installations. One problem with this kind of art, though, is that it's too large for any apartment, uh, so I fortunately I, I found the brewery. I found it to be this incredible place where my work got better because Right next door, there was always somebody that could help out if I needed to figure out that perfect piece to make an installation work. I was really fortunate to find this place and to be surrounded by so many creative people. There's oil painters and there's sculptors and there's photographers and there's, there's performance artists. And this is their story and, and this is the brewery.